everybody, this is part two of our deep dive into the Renesas RA6 M4 eval kit and today we'll be looking at the software support. So let's jump straight in. Well, Renesas have pre-loaded some demo firmware onto the board and it would seem a little churlish not to see what it's all about. So let's connect up our PC to the user USB port using the supplied cable. This powers up our board and sets our example going. Now it's probably a little overwhelmed by the green LED but hopefully you can see our blue user LED flashing there. At the moment it's flashing at 1Hz frequency and 10% brightness. User switch 1 changes the intensity with each press, first to 50% then to 90% and again it takes us back to 10% switch 2 changes the blink frequency first press goes to 5Hz and press again we go to 10Hz and at the same time we can increase the intensity at 10Hz and again and then we can just reset everything for the next part of our adventure. And for that we'll need to open up the device manager on our PC. What we're looking for is the list of ports. And if we open that up we can see that our eval board has COM3. That's the info we need to open a serial terminal. So I'm going to use PuTTY as I have it installed but uh, you could equally use something else like TerraTerm. Anyway, we need to set up a serial connection and we're connecting to COM3 and our board rate's a little higher so we need 115, 200 and I think all these other parameters can stay the same. So let's go to session and serial and open. And that gives us a menu live from our dev board. The first menu option gives us the user LED status. We can change this data with the user switches. So if I press switch one, the LED intensity goes up to 50 and click again for 90. And then back to 10. Same thing for switch 2, if I click that, our frequency goes up to 5Hz and again for 10Hz and back to 1. Now let's bump that back up and increase the intensity up to 90. Great, and here we go. And we can reset that back down again. So if we hit the space bar, that takes us back to the menu, where our second option is the web server demo. You'll need to make sure that the board's ethernet is connected to your network and hitting the tab key will get the board to use DHCP to get itself an IP address on your network. This will take a few moments and there we go, we have an IP address at 245. We'll make a mental note of that. So if we now go and open a web browser, we can input the address into the address bar at the top of the page. And here's the page the web server on our board is serving up. You can see that we're getting the same sort of information that we had from the serial link. But this time we're interactive and can control the LEDs from here. So this virtual switch 1 will knock up the LED intensity to 50% and click again for 90% and as you can see that increase also registers here. And then this switch 2 will bump the frequency up to 5Hz and again to 10Hz. And we can reset everything back to the default setting. Right then, if we close the browser, 
and go back to our serial link we can press the space bar to take us back to the menu and then we can select option 3 hitting the tab key this time gets the board to perform a domain name server lookup for the Renesas website and then it will ping the website that looks to be successful so let's hit the space bar and this time we pick number 4 which is the flash speed test and I think it might be edifying to start small so let's go for 2k ok so looking at these results the Octo SPI flash is reading 2k bytes in just 31 microseconds ok so that's got my curiosity up it'd be interesting to see what sort of data rate we get at the other extreme so this time we'll try 64k and that gives us 568 microseconds which goes to and I'm just going to work this out around 50 megabytes per second data rate hmm. anyway that just leaves us with the final option which is next steps and that gives us some resource links well all in all I think this is a nice demo application it gives you some fairly simple but useful blocks to play with they're simple enough that they won't overwhelm you if you're new to the product but they still show you how to access lots of the board functionality so let's actually take a look at some of that demo code and to do that we're going to need to download the dev tools and we can get those from the flexible software package web page on the Renesas website at the top here we have the user manual where it's super easy to find and we have it in both PDF and an online version going down the page we have an overview section with some links to download the development package for both Linux and Windows environments below that we have the dedicated download section which has our tools packages again oh and the, um, the RASC version there that includes the RA smart configurator application and that helps you set up your board support package, drivers, RTOS and so on. If you're using third party dev tools like Keel MDK or IAR's eWarm. Below the software we have the documentation which includes lots of app notes. And if we keep going one of those app notes if I can find it is for our example application on the eval board. Where are you? Ah. There you are. And as well as the documentation link, we have a link to the code. However, we can also find the code on our eval kit webpage, which has a quick start guide, user manual, and design package right at the top here where it's easy to find. And going down the page, we have an overview with some getting started info. And below that is our library of documentation including the manuals again and with a load more app notes specific to our dev kit and these are for using various sensors and bootloaders and so forth you can see it's pretty extensive and if we keep going down to the tools and uh, sample code section this is another place to get our FSP and any other software for your eval kit and if we keep going further down there's also some very useful training videos and these are great if you're new to all of this kit so as you can see we've got a lot of information to help us on our way so I'm gonna download and install everything and I'll get back to you when that's done and we're back we're in E squared studio which is the Renesas integrated development environment. If you've done any embedded development with IDEs on other devices, you may well recognize that E-Squared Studio is Eclipse based and we're using a C, C++ toolchain. If you're not familiar with it, Eclipse is a third party IDE which is easily customized and extended. So it's a very popular base for chip manufacturers to use as the IDE for their development tools. The tool itself is based around perspectives, 
which are essentially a group of windows that are helpful for a particular activity. This is the default programming perspective. But if we go up here, we can get a menu for other perspectives, like the debug perspective, which gives us some useful windows for debugging. Of course, this is all customizable by the user. Now, e -squared Studio is part of the Renesas Flexible Software Package, which is a pretty comprehensive support structure that builds off the BSP to deliver support for a hardware abstraction layer that can be used with or without a real-time operating system. The HAL means you can program the MCU without needing to have intimate knowledge of every bit setting in every register to make things happen. A real time saver. Along with the HAL, there are middleware stacks that simplify using hardware like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or USB. OK, enough of that. We'll be looking at the tools in more detail in part 3. I said I'd open up the demo code, so let's do that. I've already downloaded and extracted it from its zip file, so we can import it by going to Import. And then we need Projects from Folder select and next then we browse and I'm gonna need to go up a level here and eStudio and select folder and finish and that brings our project into here and we can expand this out here the source code for our project is here and when we expand that we can find each of the C files and the header files listed here. We can open any of these up and modify them to our heart's content in the editor. And you can see that there's a pretty brightly coloured text highlighting scheme used by the editor. So it's pretty easy to see what the code is doing at any given point. That outline window next to the editor gives us a summary of the dependencies for the bit of code that we're working on right now. So now let's look at the project configuration. That will take a moment to open. And this gives us the lowdown on how the project is using the available resources. For example, this window tells us about the hardware abstraction components that are being used. And we can find more project information with these tabs here. Here's our interrupts assignment, and this is the pin assignment. At the moment we have a port and peripheral view, but we can look at it by pin number. This is our clock setup, the BSP version info, and this is a nice little summary page for the whole project. So, the only thing left to do is to build the project. So we'll set that going. And you can see the progress down here in the console. This will take a moment, so I'm going to speed up the video. And we're done! But, as we'll be showing you how to load and debug a project in the next video, now would seem like a good place to wrap up our whistle-stop tour of the RA6M4 Eval Kit software. And that's about it for today's video. Thanks for watching and keep your eye out for the application video that we'll be doing soon, where we'll put the board through its paces. See you soon.